it's Colleen. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a very simple whole food plant-based kanji recipe. Kanji is a type of Chinese porridge. Um, it's very easy to digest. Many times kanji is eaten after you're coming over the stomach flu or just on a cold day just to warm your insides. Many times though kanji is made with chicken or pork but today we're going to be doing a whole food plant-based recipe of kanji because it's a healthier option. Eating whole food plant-based reduces environmental exposures, animal fats, and all around has more health benefits and should be incorporated in, into your diet. So far I've made this recipe three times and each time it was a big hit so I'm really hoping you enjoy it as well today. So let's get started. I have the ingredients here on the counter all organic and seasonal. I bought my recipe, I bought all my ingredients at the farmer's market or at Costco or at Sprouts. The one thing I did get at Costco was this vegetable broth, but as you can see, it is organic. The carrots from the farmer's market look really good. They're tiny, but they look really good and cute. So I'm really excited to incorporate those into the kanji recipe today. So it's really nice to use seasonal and local ingredients in your kanji because kanji is such a versatile recipe. You can actually substitute anything uh, in the recipe. You could take out the carrots and add daikon, for example. So going down to your local farmer's market and just seeing what they have is a great way to uh, just make a new kanji dish seasonally. Um, so you can see that my, I also have, not only do I have season and local, local foods, but the variety of colors. You can see I have some orange from the carrots, the brown from the mushrooms, and all the different colors add a lot of variety. And there's many different textures there as well. So you can use any grain in kanji. I chose to use long grain white rice. I also chose to do my kanji in a slow cooker. And the reason I decided to do it in a slow cooker is because kanji is typically cooked on the stovetop for a long time. So I figured, well, this is a great time to pull out the, uh, the slow cooker and see what it can do for my kanji. So I pre-chopped everything just to save time. And one thing I want to remind you about is to rinse your rice three times before adding into your pot. And the reason you want to rinse your rice is just to get rid of all that extra starch. But there is one thing I wanted to share with you that might not be so obvious to many of you. And that's how to pop open a cardamom pod. So cardamom pods look like this. You can find them. I found this at Sprouts in the spice area in, and you, they sell them in bulk. And uh, inside this pod are little seeds. And to pop it open, all I do is take the back of a spoon, I push down on the seed, and you can hear it pop. Listen for the pop. Okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this whole pod and put it into my pot, as opposed to pulling out all the individual seeds. And then when the kanji's all done, I'll just pull out the pods. The seeds will have exploded into the uh, kanji and with, with incredible flavor but you don't want to eat the pot itself because it will be very tough. So, let's see. Now we're going to get started by putting everything in the crock pot. I'm going to put the crock pot on low and I'm going to add my onions. Onions are full of fiber and folic acid and they actually help make healthy new cells. So it's a really important thing to add into our healthy kanji recipe. Next, we're going to add the carrots. And here I have two, about two whole carrots. That was one onion. That was a one yellow onion. I have two whole carrots here. And carrots are really high in vitamin A and antioxidants. And antioxidants, as many of us know, help reduce the risk of cancer and cardiovascular disease. Next, I'm going to add this rice that I pre-rinsed three times. And again, I chose white rice over brown rice in particular because it is so much easier to digest. White rice has the bran taken out, which makes it um, easier on the gut. So if you're um, dealing with any kind of, you know, if you are coming off the stomach flu or you have any gut issues, 
you want to stick with something that's easier to digest. Next, we're going to add the water and the, and the vegetable broth. Oh, that rice, by the way, was one cup. Here we have two cups of water. No, four cups of water, rather. Sorry. Four cups of water. And I'm going to shake the vegetable broth. This vegetable broth is four cups. I'm going to add the entire carton. And you can make this without vegetable broth, but I like the extra flavor that the vegetable broth brings. And you can always easily make your own as well. You don't have to buy it, which would make it even healthier. Next, we're going to add the shiitake mushrooms. This is just three shiitake mushrooms cut up real small. Shiitake mushrooms are excellent for bringing the immune system into balance, and they're both antiviral and antimicrobial. Okay, got those in there. Next, I'm going to add the ginger. And I have about a two inch piece of ginger here. Ginger is excellent if you're feeling nauseous, and it's also an anti inflammatory. So, another excellent thing to add to our healing soup. Then I have some turmeric and pepper. Turmeric is also an anti inflammatory food. And it also is known to improve brain function. And it works so much better when it's already mixed with black pepper. So we're going to add that into our soup. And now the cardamom pots. Some of the seeds actually did pop out. So we're just going to toss this in there. And this is going to be the burst of flavor in the soup. And I did six cardamom pods. And then I have one last thing. Not always so healthy, but salt does bring some extra flavor into, into the uh, kanji. So we're going to just sprinkle a little salt. That's about a teaspoon of salt. You can eliminate it. You don't need to add the salt at all. Then we're going to give this a little stir. I'm going to put the lid on. And we're going to let this crock pot do its magic. And in about six to eight hours, our kanji will be done. Enjoy.